Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Voices from the Mausoleum. Um, I touched a little bit on this uh, information in yesterday's episode of the Coffee Crypt. Um, but for those of you who might have been interested in like a full update on what's going on with me, um, I figured I would just do a separate video, nothing too long, just giving some more information. Um, if you're not familiar, last August I was admitted into the hospital. I went to the ER because I had severe abdominal pain, thought it was appendix, got a CT scan, there was a mass on my spine. I was in the hospital for a very long time. While I was there, I had COVID, super fun, zero out of 10, do not recommend. Um, and I was referred to a plethora of people, an oncologist, um, a neurosurgeon, uh, very spooky stuff, very scary. Um, I met with a neurosurgeon in September, um, who told me that it was a pretty serious issue and I needed to have surgery to resolve it. Otherwise it was going to continue to grow the mass and, um, it could affect my mobility and some bodily function things that are super not fun to have to deal with and so on and so forth. So. I kind of had a lot to wrap my head around. I made the decision to not do anything about it yet, mostly because the risk associated with the surgery include losing the ability to use my right leg. Um, many of you know this. I am a single mom of a five-year-old, a uh, very active five-year-old. And, you know, the end of the year is like the like some of the best times to be a parent. It's got, how you know, there's Halloween, there's other holiday things, there's Christmas, like super fun time. I really felt like I needed to make a decision based on what felt good for my life because my doctor had advised me to take my time. She was like, this isn't fast growing. You've got some time to think about it, think about life, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so basically I just decided to wait. Um, she was getting ready to go on maternity leave and she wouldn't have been back until the first of this year anyway. And I really liked her and I felt like super confident in her and I really didn't want to have to work with anybody else or start over. Um, on top of the fact that this could not be so life-changing that holidays are going to look very different for me for the rest of my life. And so I just felt like it was better to wait and spend the time enjoying life and then, you know, come back to the first year. Um, so last Tuesday we had our follow-up. She got all new imaging. The imaging from the hospital wasn't great. Um, and she had, she ran new pathology on the sample that was taken when I was in the hospital. And, um, so I met with her and we went over everything. Um, initially, if you heard the other updates, um, that I gave during that time last year, um, there was this big confident like thing where she was like, no, I'm pretty sure the mass has eaten away so much at your spine. You're going to have to have rod in your back. And I was like, that was the one thing that I was hoping other than obviously like post-surgery stuff, like I was really hoping wasn't going to be the case. And so, with new imaging, she was able to determine that I don't need a rod. Um, she said there's a 10 to 12% chance that I may need it later in life, but it's very unlikely because of my age. Um, I'm in, I'm healthy, mostly. Um, maybe not mentally, <laughs> but physically I'm doing all right. And um, so she, you know, she's pretty confident that I would have to have the rod, which is really good. She's, she thinks that if I ever need one, it will be something later in life that will come up and I'll need it. But otherwise, um, of the 100% of the mass that exists, um, she is only taking 5% of it out. 5% of this mass is pushing on my nerves and could be causing, could cause a lot of issues later. Um, the biggest thing with the 95% is she really didn't want to focus on that because that's going to be something that's dealt with much later. Right now we're dealing with like the critical stuff. Um, the, the basic consensus is that this is benign. So it's not malignant. It's not aggressive. Um, it's just a mass growing in a really bad place and we got to get it out if it's, or, or it could really hurt my, my quality of life. And so Surgery date is February 2nd, which is super fast. Um, I've had a lot of time to process this. Um, I've been making plans with my family, work new about it, like content we've been talking about. It. Steve and I have been working on things um, just to kind of get a plan together of what this all looks like. And essentially, um, you know, I went in last week prepared to make a decision, like, let's get this shit scheduled and get it taken care of. I want this done. I don't want to deal with it anymore. And I don't want to take any more chances. So... Um, so February 2nd, I go to the hospital at 5.30 in the morning. My surgery could take anywhere from four hours to all day. It just depends. <clears throat> um, basically, um, you know, the terminology she used is sticky. So I think what I'm, what I think what I'm gathering is that benign tumors tend to not be as sticky or as hard to get out as malignant ones. 
Um, that doesn't mean that this won't be sticky, right? So sticky just meaning it's more convoluted, it's in stuff, it's it's harder to get out. Um, so that's going to affect how long I'm in surgery. Um, I'll be in the hospital from three to five days. I'll do PT while I'm there. Um, all of the risks associated with this, um, the big one, the biggest ones are loss of control over bowels and bladder. Um, weakness or the inability to use my right leg. Those are the major ones. Um, I did have to ask for my own sanity, the percentage of mortality rate in this, and it's less than 1%. Um, so she's not concerned that I'm not going to make it out of this, which was very reassuring. Um, and then the other risks include things like spinal fluid leakage, which is less than 5% risk. So the biggest risk is the nerve damage based on what this looks like when she gets in, because you can tell a lot by an image, but you can't tell everything. And so that'll be a thing. They're going to take a biopsy um, sample of the tissue while they're taking stuff out and run it to see exactly what kind of tumor it is. That will determine if the 95% other piece of the tumor gets treated or not. Um, there's a chance it could be treated with radiation, but more than likely it's just going to be monitoring it, making sure it doesn't grow anymore. Um, I'll have to monitor it for the rest of my life. Um, so, you know, after the surgery, after my follow-up, I'll go get an MRI after six months and then six more months, I'll get another MRI. And if nothing is moving or changing or growing or anything crazy, then I get to um, to go down to just once a year. Um, we'll get MRIs done to see if anything has changed. Um, I would feel much more confident if it was just out because then I feel like, you know, we're risking, but I, I trust them. I, I'm They know what they're doing. They know more about tumors than I obviously do. So um, yeah, and then my downtime is going to be two to six weeks. So uh, we mentioned this in the Coffee Crypt. I will be on official hiatus from content um, for February and all of March. I'll be coming back in uh, April. Um, there's a small chance that could change. Um, the doctor seems to just be kind of like, you know, your heal time is it varies person to person. And so it could be that after two weeks, I'm feeling better. I might be able to do some things, but I'm genuinely not going to rush it. I'm going to take the time to focus on on, on me. And it can be really difficult, but I think that's the right path for me to take. You know, work is on board. Work is being supportive. I've got a support system. You guys are supportive. I needed to to really just allow people to be supportive and just to take the opportunity to focus on on healing. And so, um, obviously, Steve will be getting firsthand updates. Steve and I are friends outside of content. Um, we text and talk all the time. And so, um, you know, as I get updates, I'll share. I'll be texting him, or my best friend will be texting him and giving him updates, and he'll be able to share things accordingly. Um, he will not be tied into or logged into my actual socials. So Steve has separate socials than I do that I run for voices. Um, but he is still reachable. You know, if you guys want an update and you don't see anything or you want to check out, you know, or check in and see how I'm doing, Steve is going to be happy to, to talk to anyone who may want an update, um, as well as posting stuff, I'm sure on the community post on YouTube. So, um, anyway, in the meantime, um, none of my series are stopping. Uh, Found Footage Fridays is going to continue every week like normal. Um, that will be with Steve and um, and Tom. And then remakes will be the same. It'll be Scott and Tom. I mean, Scott and Steve. And then, um, you know, Kat and I are going to record, I think probably this week coming up or maybe next week, we're going to record two more episodes of Horror in Real, horror, blah, 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 blah. Horror in real Life, um, which seems to be doing really well. You guys seem to really like that episode. So we're going to do more of it. We were going to do more anyway, but um, so we'll have a February, March episode. Those will just be pre-recorded. Um, Steve is still going to do lives. He's going to have guest hosts for the Toffee Crypt. He's still going to be pulling influential horrors. I'm going to have um, some intro, an influential horror episode coming out in February as well. Um, so it's it's that's pre-recorded. So content's going to go on as usual. And I know some people are like, oh, like we don't worry, we don't worry about content. Um, that's probably easier said than done. I, I've spent three years building this brand and it's very near and dear and I don't want the content to stop. Um, and you know, Steve came on at a really great time. He came on right after I got this news, but that's not why he came on. It just worked out really great that I have somebody that I can trust and put my faith in that's, that's going to do right by the channel and right by me and who also cares about me as a human being. And, um, that's really important. And so if we have ongoing collaborations, if we have, um, if we've already discussed you coming on the channel, but we haven't scheduled anything, you can absolutely reach out to Steve. He will be doing all the scheduling and all the shows for February and March. Um, so you can reach out to him, um, to finalize those things if you need to. Um, otherwise, 
I will be back in April. Um, I'll be sharing stuff periodically on socials once I can, you know, once I'm, once I'm feeling up to it. Um, I'll probably do another update. Maybe not sitting down like this, but probably on my phone. The first two weeks, I'm, I'm not going to do my stairs in my house. So I'll have to stay downstairs. Um, so I may do something on my phone, but I'm hoping I'll feel good enough to at least get some reading done, maybe some writing. I've got a lot of writing projects this year. I'm hoping to get some movies and some shows in. So go ahead and sound out with some some recommends. I've been killing it with the shows lately. Um, some horror, not, not all are horror, um, but I'm really, I'm, I'm oddly looking forward to the downtime, I think, because my life is constantly go, 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 stress, 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 do, do, do. And I think it will be really nice to not have to do everything by myself for once, you know? So anyway, um, that's really all I had. I don't want to make this a super long video. I just know people were asking and, and, and asking about for details and stuff. So February 2nd is my surgery date. Steve will give updates. And um, otherwise, yeah, that's really all I had for this. I just wanted to give a quick update on my medical situation. So thank you guys so much for all the support and love. Um, don't forget, we do have a Patreon that just went live with some really fun things. Um, and it's not too late to get in for the February sticker. Um, if you want to do the bone collector tier, um, that seems to be the one people are liking right now. So anyway, make sure you check that out. All the links are in the description for this episode. And uh, take care of yourselves and uh, I'll see you in April.